Armor. So, Chris, how many miles do you think we lost? I don't know. It must have been hundreds. Really? Whoa, a tortoise! Whoa! Oh, whoa! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You see that? Nice one, Chris. <laughs> it's a good thing I had my helmet on. It protects my head like armor. <sighs> we both have armor. <laughs> hey, buddy, if you don't stick your head out of your shell, you're going to miss Sabu. Let's call him. Sabu, Sabu! Sabu! There he is. Leap on in here, buddy. Whoa, a 20 footer. Whoa. How about a snack, Zabu? He's not talking, but I know just the thing for a hungry lemur. Walnuts! They come with their own armor. The shell protects the nut inside. Just like your helmet, Chris. It protects the nut inside, too. <laughs> yeah, real funny, Martin. Zabu, I've got a nut for you. You want it, Zabu? There you go. Atta boy. Oh, hi, Tortoise. I need a shell like yours to protect me, because I keep bumping into things. Brothers! Yes, Abba. You know what? I need a shell like the Tortoise to protect me when I bump into things. Yeah, shells are great armor. Armor? Armor's for protection. Woohoo! With armor, I could leap anywhere! <laughs> yeah, I could leap high, I could leap low, I could leap anywhere I want to go! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Zabu? Hey, Zabu. I have a feeling this is going to be a tough day. Why, Zab? Why? Because I keep getting hurt. Like when I sat on that creature before. Who could it be? Who could it be? <laughs> this animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? <laughs> okay, he had two eyes and long whiskers on his nose. <laughs> He had long, prickly spikes all over his body. And then I found out I was sitting on his prickly friend. Two prickly, whiskered creatures. Do you know who they are? All right, prickly all over, huh? Sounds like quills. Yeah, it sounds like a creature you don't want to sit on. <laughs> African crested porcupines. And Quill Seeker, the mystery animals are here. These guys are incredible looking. Check it out. Take a close look at the porcupine's face. He has really small eyes and big nose and ears. You don't want to get on the prickly side of these guys. But they're prickly all over. <laughs> hey there, porcupine. Welcome to Animal Junction. What amazing creatures, huh? Yeah. These guys are called African crested porcupines because of that amazing crest on the top of their heads. It's like a special haircut called a mohawk. Remember those haircuts? Okay, you asked for it. Hey, that's what I'll call you, Mo and Hawk. <laughs> now take it easy with those quills. Wow, look at his nose go. He's sniffing around the snack machine. I wonder if he's hungry. Hey, Martin, what do you guys smell? Aha! Apples! Woo! Got it. Watch how fast a porcupine can eat this apple. Here you go, buddy. Look how fast that jaw moves. Choo, choo, choo. He's hypercharged. Look at us go. Eaters! I can't believe my mind! Hey, look who else is here! It's Capybara, and he wants an apple too! 
Wow, you've got a face almost like Capybara. Yeah, in fact, you and Capy look a lot alike. Except for all the quills. <laughs> exactly, Zabu. The capybara and the porcupine look alike because they're both rodents. The capybara is the biggest rodent of all, and he doesn't have any quills like another cousin of his, the North American porcupine, who eats bark from trees. People who live in North America are used to thinking of porcupines as tree creatures, but African crested porcupines are most comfortable on the ground. And also, there's a difference between these quills and the quills of the North American porcupine. Each one of her 30,000 hairs are hollow. Hollow like this straw. <laughs> so they don't weigh so much. Well, the African crested porcupine's quills are longer and filled with stuff that's kind of like sponge toffee. Except sponge toffee is a lot better to eat than porcupine quills. The spongy material keeps the quills stiff, but also keeps them light at the same time. And there's something else amazing about these quills. See those special quills in the center of his tail? The ones that are darker and hollow? Those are the rattling quills. When a porcupine shakes those quills, he's saying, don't come too close. Kind of like a rattlesnake shaking her tail. Now let's imagine that I'm a lion, okay? If I wanted to jump on one of these porcupines, you're now gonna see how they use their quills. Okay, so I'm a lion and I jump. Whoa! Listen to that rattle. He's a real racer, wow! Whoa, he's practicing like you would against a real predator. Come on back. Oh, look at him go, whoa! He's fast and quick, look at that. He's always keeping his quills towards me. And it's those tail quills that do the rattling, right in there. You see those quills, and he, he spreads them out so that nobody will get near him. Or if they do, he backs up and puts his quills in your face. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. You are so lucky to have that Mungatsika armor, Mo. Hey, Martin. Yes, yeah, Zob. You know what? I wish it was more like Mo and Hawk. <laughs> and I wish I had some of that armor stuff to protect me, too. But you do, Zabu. Mm -hmm. All creatures have coverings that protect mm -hmm. their body. Some have shells, <laughs> like a ram's head snail. She can go back into her shell for protection. And look at her babies. When they hatch, they already have shells on their backs. And then... There's the crocodile. Her skin is incredibly tough because it's made up of scales, not to mention her long, sharp teeth. She is one tough creature, and there aren't many creatures who would want to mess with her. Don't forget about birds. Feathers could be thought of as armor, like a duck's or a penguin's. Their feathers keep them warm and dry, armor for cold water. And some, like you, have fur. Take the polar bear. Her fur protects her from the cold, just like our warm clothes in the winter. But I want something stronger and harder, so I don't hurt myself anymore. Like rollerblade gear? Yeah, or well, like your suit of armor. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Nothing can get me now. Mmm, banana cream. Yeah, that's it. That's the armor I want. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Without the pie. You just have to take some measurements? Yeah, let's see how big your head is there. Whoa. Let's go ahead now your arm. Now let me see your belly there. Yeah, you're pretty bookie, Zabu. Yeah. Now hold still, we got your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Three inches, what? Three inches. All right, well, we have the measurements. Now let's get to the armor. To the armor? Wow. Huh. Wow, look at me now! <laughs> hey, I didn't get hurt! <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, excuse me. Whoa! Mungatsika, I can bump into things and it won't hurt! My armor is hard! Whoa! <laughs> Armor's great, Zabu, but it can slow you down. How slow would you walk if you had a tortoise shell on your back? And a horseshoe crab has great armor that hasn't changed in millions of years. 
And after all that time, the crab is still one slow mover. Oh, Toph, you like my armor? Hmm? They're a little nervous, Sabu. They're not sure what's going on. They mm -hmm. think your armor's kind of weird and noisy. <laughs> huh. Oh, but it's still me, Zabu. Hey, who hava hava? Hey, who hava hava? I'm still Zabu under all of this armor. Hey, who hava hava? Hey, who hava hava? I'm still Zabu under all of this armor. Rain coming! Yay! Hmm? Uh oh. I maybe accidentally did my special Madagascar rain dance. Guys, uh, this is, something's happening. Huh? W what's this red stuff? Oh. I get. No! What's going on, brothers? Sabu's armor rusted in the rain. He's immobilized. We've got to help him get out. <laughs> See, Sabu, this is what happens when iron oxidizes. Water makes it happen fast, and it's called rust. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. Oh. That feels better. Thanks, guys. Right. Now, can you make me another armor that won't get rusty this time? And it needs to be more bendy and uh, softer and not so noisy. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. That's everything. <laughs> well, that's a tough one, Zob. Let's think of what other types of armor creatures have. How about fat? Fat is great armor against cold water. Sea lions have double layer protection, fat and fur. And a manatee has lots and lots of blobbery fat to keep him warm. If it wasn't for fat, a beluga whale couldn't survive in freezing water. Well, I don't think I can swing from trees with blubbery arm. Ah, 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 ah. Uh-oh. Uh, arm. Ah, 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 Looks like a big sneeze ah, coming on. Ah, Look out for ah, the spray! Ah, ah, Shoot! Ah! Ah! Mud can be armor, too! An elephant uses it, and a rhino loves rolling around in gooey mud. It protects her from insect bites. Water buffalo have a great time rolling in mud, too. And there's a big rodent we all know who digs the feeling of mud on her fur. Right, Cappy? Brothers, Tot lost some quills. Well, Zob, sometimes porcupine quills fall off, just like hair falls off, because that's what quills really are, specially modified porcupine hair. Angatsika, brothers, let's make some prickly stick kind of armor, porcupine armor. <laughs> We're gonna need a lot of quills. You wanna know a great place to find a lot of quills? Yeah. Over there. Hmm? Where? Over here, Zob, in the cave. There are always lots of porcupine quills in a porcupine den. So this is the porcupine den? Yeah, porcupine dens can be in rock crevices, other creatures abandoned holes, or a cave. In a den, you'll find lots of porcupine quills. A porcupine loses quills to make room for new ones that are growing. So he loses quills, but he's always prickly. Whoa, Zabu! <laughs> I've got quills all over me, Martin. Oh, wow, you should, whoo, <laughs> talk about armor. Well, thanks, Mo. Thanks, Hawk. I'm feeling porcupine-ish. I feel different, not the same. This kind of feeling I can't explain. There's only one thing that I can do. I feel African Crescent Porcupine-ish. How about you, Porcupine-ish? I feel Porcupine-ish. <laughs> Porcupine-ish. I'm a pointy-haired prickler, shuffling all around. Crested, porcupine-ish. Wow, nothing can hurt me now. <laughs> that reminds me of one time in Sabu Land. I was leaping along. Leap, 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 leap. When I got hit by a snowball. Oof. <laughs> Since its little sister's got Google, then noggin drill, and sigh. Oh, hey, who turned out the lies? So I said, come on, everybody, let's hide behind the rocks. Oh, great idea. Oh, hi. Hey, I'm wet, I'm cold. 
Yeah, they're getting us goods, Abu. What do we do now, huh? Anybody got a, any ideas? Huh? Then my mind got a mungit oh, oh, idea. Oh, Let's hide oh, behind oh, baby oh, Zabumafuasaurus. Oh, His skin is so thick, snowballs won't bother him. He'll oh, protect us. Come on, oh, hide everybody. Oh, 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 can't get me now. Oh, 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 safe little drill. Oh, oh, can't hit me. Oh, 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 oh. So we were safe behind baby Zabumafuasaurus. The end. Well, oh, oh, oh. oh, no. What's wrong? Well, every time I try to leap, I get myself with a quill. Oh, brothers, we have a problem. Yeah, a leaping lemur who can't leap? That is a problem. You know what, guys? What's up? Phew, <laughs> could you? Sure. Yeah, thanks. From now on, my armor's gonna be my eyes, my ears, and my brain. I'm gonna use them to stay out of trouble. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. Sometimes staying out of trouble is the best armor. What? Mo says it's time to go back to living free and in the wild. Bye, Mo. Bye, Hawk. To Mangatsika African Crested Porcupines. What? Incoming. Duck! It's not a duck. It's Sticky Feet the Peregrine Falcon. Hey, Sticky Feet. Hop on, buddy. Hop on. This raptor handling glove protects my arm from those sharp, powerful talons. Mm -hmm. And it was those talons that brought the message from the animal helpers. Oh. Hi, Crap Brothers. Hi, Sabu. Yesterday, the animal helpers and I were playing Frisbee when the Frisbee landed near a tree with a robin's nest in it. Baby birds start out in an egg. The eggshell keeps them safe until they're ready to hatch. That's what I call great armor. Not all birds lay their eggs in trees. Some lay theirs in hidden places right on the ground. Like a quail, her eggs aren't blue like robins. They're brown with speckles. That makes it hard for predators to see them. So we always watch where we're walking, because we wouldn't want to step on a bird's nest. Amy is so, so great to all creatures. You know, Chris, I was thinking. I think what? you were thinking what I was thinking. Sounds like a trip to me. To the closet! <laughs> They're going to the closet, they're going on a trip. They're going to the closet to grab their stuff and split. Oh, but all the stuff's gonna fall on us. And you know how that feels. Don't worry, Chris. I found the way. Nothing. They're going on a cool adventure and they don't know what's in store. Let's they're go. coming from the <laughs> closet and hey, they're headed me. out the door. See you later, Zob. Hey, Martin, you coming? <laughs> a jackal, an elephant, and we are in Africa. And it's out here on the African savanna that the African crested porcupine uses his sharp quills as a defense. But you know, when you look around, you start to realize that of all the animals out here, very few have any armor at all. They might not have armor you can see, like porcupine quills, but they must have something to help them survive in the wilderness. So the question is, how do these unarmored animals survive? The answer is the three Fs. The three Fs? I thought that was for staying warm in the winter. No, that's the four Fs. This the is the three, three Fs. Fs. Fast feet, flight, formidable size and strength. Fast feet is what a lot of creatures depend on to stay a step ahead of predators. Let's see how fast we can get our feet moving. Okay, feet, don't let me down. Keep up with zebra feet. We gotta get going faster, faster. I'm kicking into high gear. Yeah, this is great, but we gotta go faster even. To be a fast creature of flight, you have to run like the wind. Whoa, my fast feet are getting ahead of me. <laughs> I can't keep up with mine either. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you okay? I think so. Well. I guess we're not one of them, but there are a lot of creatures who know how to handle their fast feet. And there are a lot of creatures who know how to handle their wings. And that brings us to the next F, flight. You know how birds fly to get away from danger, right? Well, to do that, they have to be light, and that's why they don't have armor. But they do have flight distance. Flight distance is how close a bird lets a predator get before he says, hey, that's close enough. I'm out of here. Let's see the flight distance of the hornbill. Hey, they let you get pretty close. Close. 
Closer. Closer. Up. Oh, that's enough for one. And two, they're both out of here. Now it's on to the third F. Formidable size and strength. And nobody does that bigger or better than a herd of elephants. Not many creatures want to mess with an elephant. In fact, the only creatures elephants worry about are people and sometimes lions. OK, so we don't have the size and strength of an elephant. We can't fly like a bird, and we're really not that fast. So how do we protect ourselves out here on the African savanna without armor? Piece of cake! <laughs> <laughs> With our chief, of course. Good thinking, bro. Plus, it's the fastest way for us humans to head back to Animal Junction. I wonder what Zabu's up to now. Let's check it out. Yeah. Huh? Please? Do it again. Well, come on, do it again. A three-banded armadillo. Please, do it again. Do what again, Zab? Well, roll up into a Super Bowl. Yeah, just like that. Whoa. An armadillo rolls up into a ball for protection from predators. And look at what a great armor this is. Manga, so you can talk about hard. Yeah, you can't get at her in there. Especially because the tailpiece and the top of the head fit together like a puzzle, oh, completing yeah. the ball of armor. And you know what else? An armadillo doesn't have fat on her belly. It's on her back. That helps her roll into a really tight ball. A ball? Oh. Hmm. You want to see what else she can do? Armadillo on the move. Skittle around on the tips of your fingers and toes. Yeah! Oh yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of it. With such long claws, you have to run. On the tips of your nails. Even with all this armor weighing her down, she's still incredibly fast. <laughs> <laughs> and despite the heavy armor, an armadillo can still swim. This is how she does it. She gulps in a lot of air. This inflates her stomach, kind of like a balloon, to twice its normal size. That helps her float and swim. Wow. Now the back of an armadillo is made up of these bony plates called scutes. But on her belly, you can see that the armadillo has some hair. And look at that twitchy little nose. Uh, my mind thinks that lemurs weren't made for rolling up in the ball. Uh, 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 lemurs were made for leaping. Thinking of balls, that reminds me of one time in Sabu Land. <laughs> I was leaping along, leap, 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 leap. And then I saw something that made me not believe my mind. Baby Zabumafuasaurus was throwing something up and down with his mouth. And that something was Psy. I love playing ball. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Baby Zabumafuasaurus, that's not a ball, that's Psy. Stop. Oh, what? Oh, oh, no. My ball! My no, no, ball! Someone Maybe help me stop ball. baby Zabumafuasaurus! He ball. thinks size a ball! Get and he might pop him! No, no, my! Guys! Oh, hang on! Google, help me stop baby Zabumafuasaurus! Uh, oh, baby Zabumafuasaurus, I'm not a ball, I'm a son! Sorry, sir! The end. Armored <laughs> creatures are great creatures! <laughs> this animal is a friend of mine, from the tip of his nose to his funny behind. All the friends that we met today are special in their own way. We've all got different names, but we're really all the same. Thanks for dropping by, we're glad you came. These animals are friends of mine. They jump and swim, crawl, fly, and climb. One more thing we have to say, go make an animal friend today. Yeah. See you later. Well, guess I'll be going home too. Hey, my mind just got an idea. I'll go home wearing my own armor. <laughs> armor? I thought he was done with arm. Yeah, I thought he was gonna use his eyes, brains, and ears to stay out of trouble. Uh-oh, Zabu forgot to use the door again. No, I didn't. Sometimes 
are just like to wear armor and walk through walls. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Zabu. Hi, my name is Tom, and this is my dog, Grace. He loves to chase me. <laughs> grow, Zabu, grow. But we really don't know how to do this. I know, but we'll figure something out somehow. But a human baby? We know how to take care of all sorts of creatures. But human babies? I think we're going to need a little help on this one. Do you want to help us take care of our friend's baby? All right. Well, why don't we start out by putting him down right over here and put him right in the basket. All right. Maybe put something under his head, what do you think? <laughs> there, perfect. Okay, now what? Well, we're gonna need a lot of help for this one. Zabumafu! Zabu! Zabumafu! Zabu! Zabu! How you doing, buddy? Come on, Zab! Those are big leaps! And you know what? You look a little bigger. He does, doesn't he? Have you been growing again? I'll take that as a yes! You know, lemurs like Zabu are taller than you think. Zabu usually has his legs bent and ready to leap! But when he stretches out, you find out how long he really is. But you know Zabu, he won't tell us exactly how much he's grown until he's had a snack. So, time for a lemur snack. Yeah, the broccoli, one of Zabu's favorites. They look like little trees. Yeah, there you go. Let's see if Zabu wants to eat the whole thing to grow even bigger. I guess he does. Give me Zabu the food. Um, two. What's up? Two. Two? Yeah, two. Two garbanzo beans. I'm two garbanzo beans taller. Uh. <laughs> two garbanzo <laughs> beans? That's pretty good, Zabu. Now, since you're such a growing machine, can you help us take care of this baby? <gasps> Manga Chica. A human baby. Of course I'll help. It'll be easy, easy, easy. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Zabu. <laughs> you guys take care of babies all the time. Baby jaguars, <laughs> baby kawadis, baby bears. How different could it be? You know, maybe well, he's uh, right. Yeah, and another creature who can help us grow is headed this way. Who could it be? Who could it be? Come on! This animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? Okay, he had two big ears. They looked like big furry brown leaves. <laughs> And he had a really long tail. Oh, and, and two big feet that bounced. Who could it be? This animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? A big eared bouncing creature. Do you know who he is? Let's see, powerful legs, big ears, and a long tail. Jumped, not walked. Of course, a baby red kangaroo. Hey, buddy. <laughs> How's it going? Unga Tsiko, the mystery animal's here. He's a baby red kangaroo, and he's about 10 months old, which makes him just a little older than the human baby. One of the amazing things about a kangaroo is that they have to move both back legs at the same time. They can't move them independently. They always go at the same time. Look at how the kangaroo's ears swivel around, picking up all the sounds. Their ears are so good they can hear a rainstorm 20 miles away. Listen, he hears something. And right now he can hear the human baby. Look. He's going over to say hi. Hey, everybody, I have a great idea. Baby one and baby two, let's grow up together, all right? Huh? OK, so now we have three young creatures who want to grow up healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. A lemur. Oh, that's me. One more. <laughs> well, I think I'll call you uh, Bigfoot. And a human baby. Oh, I'll give you a name, too. I know. What's that sound you make? Uh, 
the, 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 it's a gurgling sound. Oh, that's it. I'll call him Gurgles. <laughs> Gurgles? Yeah. But Zabu, he already has a name. His name is Xavier. Well, I think Gurgles is better because that's the sound he makes. Well, I think he likes it when I call him that too. Hi, Gurgles. <laughs> what does it smell like, Zabu? Like a growing Gurgles. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Gurgles, maybe I should have called you Bigfoot. <laughs> All right, time to measure everybody's height. Let's start with the kangaroo. All right, buddy. OK, stand still. Got it. All right, kangaroo is two feet and two inches tall. Well, good work, Bigfoot. I wonder how many garbanzo beans that is. Chris, bring in the baby. You ready, Xavier? Let's go. Right. Hey, Xavier, high five. Yeah. <laughs> it's Xavier's turn to be measured. I'll measure at the top of his head. Right there. Two feet exactly. Oh, good work, Gurgles. You're almost as tall as Bigfoot. Zabu, it's your turn. Yep, I'm next. OK, I'm ready. All right, Zabu, stand up tall. Let's see where you mark out. All right. Whoa, two feet, three and a half inches. <laughs> Everybody's measured. Now, we'll go away and come back later to see who grew. OK, let's grow. But remember, different creatures grow at different paces. An elephant grows very slowly, like a human. At about two years old, she's only as tall as her mother's belly and is still totally dependent upon her. But a puppy grows much faster. By about a year old, a dog is pretty much full grown. Baby! Shh. Come on, guys, it's all right. What do we do? Here's an idea. It's okay, guys. Okay. This guy's definitely hungry. Oh, so he must be hungry, too. Are you hungry? Well, I know I'm hungry. This growing lemur deserves a snack. <laughs> Way to go, Zabu. One of the things every creature needs to grow is good food. I said a snack, not a smack. One thing that helps all creatures grow is eating. Eating good food helps you grow up to be healthy and strong. Hey, Martin, maybe everybody's hungry. Milk's a great first food. Here you go, Chris, all right? If you want to grow, you have to eat. Mangrotsika, it's time to grow. Yeah, and milk is the only thing that these two babies need to eat. Milk has everything in it that they need in order to grow. A baby kangaroo will drink milk until he's about a year old. And the milk is actually inside his mom's pouch. Excuse me. All right, we should start growing right about now. Hey. We're not growing fast enough. Hey, brother. Heads up. Oh, I need something that'll make us grow faster. Well, there is something. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. What, brothers? What? To, to the laboratory. Uh-oh. I had to ask. Organic ingredients. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. We have cattle. Yes, it be. No, I can't watch. Uh, yes. Oh. Mash it nicely. Yes, it's coming along very well. <laughs> Do you think this organic growth formula will really work? Uh, I don't know, but I do know that it won't hurt. Won't hurt? That's what I like to hear. All right, the growth goop formula is ready. Now, Zabu, stand under the turbo jets. OK, let her rip. Whoa! This is great! <laughs> Whoa! Uh, I feel like I'm growing already! Look out, grow! Grow! <laughs> There's nothing like a Crat Brother Grow formula to make you grow! <laughs> it worked! Sabu, <laughs> you're huge! This could only happen in Animal Junction. If Toothbrush the Elephant could see me now. <laughs> oh. oh, no. What's happening? Where are you? Oh. 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 
was afraid of that. The grow goop spray only lasts a short time. Well, I guess I'll have to go back to growing like a normal lemur. Yeah, I guess so. Uh oh, crying baby alert. We better check with our consultant again. A nap. A kangaroo takes a nap in his mother's pouch. A kangaroo pouch is a great place to rest when you're tired. It's nice, warm, and safe. <gasps> that must be what Fergles wants, a nap. Of course, sleep is the second thing all baby creatures need to grow. Whether you're a human or a lion, you need a lot of sleep. In fact, a lion sleeps between 17 to 19 hours a day. Now that's a lot of sleep. If you sleep, little gurgles, you gotta sleep so you can grow. Yeah. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, little gurgles. You gotta sleep so you can grow, and then you can leap, 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 leap. <laughs> oh, Bigfoot sure looks comfortable, and so is Gurgles. Hmm. Maybe I'll help everybody have a nap. I'll tell them a story from Sabu Land. I was leaping along. Leap, 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 leap. <laughs> leap, 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 leap. When I bumped into Sensit, oof. I said, hello, Sensit. Oh, hi, Sabu. I'm worried, really worried. <laughs> What's wrong? I can't find my little sister. <laughs> can't find them anywhere. <laughs> Even my super senses can't find them. <laughs> hmm. If we were taller than the trees, we'd see them for sure. Oh, but we're not taller. We will be. Hey, Snow Lemur, you have a growberry? Oh, sure. Uh, sure, Zabu. Uh, one growberry uh, coming up. Uh, I mean, uh, down. Yeah, down. Uh, here it comes. Uh, oh, watch out. Oh. 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 <laughs> there, one for you and one for me. So we ate the growberries and we grew bigger and bigger. We grew so giant that we could see clear across Zabu land. Oh, there they are. My little sister's there with Bibi. Oh. Here, Sense it. Have a shrink berry. So we shrunk back to normal size and went over to Phoebe's pool. <laughs> I found them! Thanks, Zabu! Anytime, Sense it. Sometimes it's good to grow tall. And sometimes it's good to be small. Yeah. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Great story, huh? Zabu. And Xavier and Bigfoot had a good nap. No problem. I help creatures grow just like a growberry, but they don't look any taller. Just wait, Zabu. Hmm? It might not look like they're growing, but they are. You'll see. Okay, then. What now? It looks like Bigfoot really knows how to grow. That's right. The third thing that helps creatures grow. Exercise. If you want to grow, you got to play. Because playing gets you moving and makes your muscles strong. Playing games, figuring things out, and learning new things helps your mind grow, too. Well, I can help with this. I'm great at playing. Mongrel Zika, let's grow! Let's hop like kangaroos. Kangaroos like to hop along at 12 to 15 miles per hour. But when they really want to move, they can go 45 miles per hour. I feel kangarooish. How about you? I feel different, not the same. This kind of feeling I can't explain. There's only one thing that I can do. I feel kangarooish. How about you, kangarooish? What? I feel kangarooish. Kangarooish. I'm a fast jumping grower, a baby kangaroo. I'm ready to be measured. Let's see if I grew any taller. All right, Sabu, up against the wall. Mm -hmm. Hey, no cheating. Uh -uh. Right <laughs> there. <gasps> Mongrel Zika, I did grow. Well, that must be a whole garbanzo bean and a half taller. <laughs> All right, it's Xavier's turn. Come on, buddy. Go right over here. And let's just... Whoa, one whole garbanzo bean for Xavier. Bigfoot's next. I forgot how hard it is to measure a kangaroo. <laughs> All right, buddy, hold on. 
Wait, hop over this way! <laughs> He's having so much fun with this, I'm never gonna get to measure him. Wait, I've got an idea. All right, here's the trick. A little snack will stop him. All right, now I can get a measurement on you. Two feet, two and a half inches. Okay, well, that, that's enough for now. Wait, wait. Hey, look at this, guys. The kangaroo grew too. He shot up about two garbanzo beans. I can't believe my mind. Food, sleep, and exercise, they really do help creatures grow. That's what it takes to grow a creature. Yeah. <laughs> Zabu was right all along. All creatures need pretty much the same thing to grow up healthy and strong. So, taking care of a human baby is actually just as easy as taking care of a baby kangaroo. Looks like Bigfoot's going to show his mom how much he grew. <laughs> hey, Martin. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jennifer. How's it going? We had a great time taking care of your brother. Yeah, yeah it was no problem. See you later. Hey, Zabu. My Xavier Gurgles, <laughs> he was a great grower. Well, he grew one whole garbanzo bean today. And like I said before, growing him was easy, easy, easy. <laughs> duck! Bean coming! Duck! That's not a duck. That's my pal Sticky Feet. The peregrine oh. falcon. Uh, are you still growing, Sticky Feet? Oh, no. Hmm? He's full grown, Zabu. Burns grow pretty fast. He grew up in one year, and now he's 15 years old and he brought a message from the animal helper. Oh, yeah. Hi, Crack Brothers. Guess what happened? Our cat, Myrtle, had kittens, and you'll never get to where she's keeping them. I was in my pajamas, all ready for bed, when I heard these little meowing sounds. But I didn't know where they were coming from. I looked all around and finally looked in the closet. Myrtle had moved her kittens in there. She needed a safe place to look after them, and she picked my closet. Myrtle's a great mom, and she'll help these kittens grow up healthy. Amy is great with creatures. Oh yeah, she's helping creatures grow just like me. Grow, Amy, grow! <laughs> There are creatures growing up all over the world. So how do we decide where to go to find growing creatures? Well, let's let this frog pick. Oh. He wants you to stay home. Where do you want to go? Well, India! India! Seems like a trip to me. <laughs> to the closet! <laughs> They're going to the closet. They're going on a trip. They're going to the closet to grab their stuff and split. <laughs> They're going on a cool adventure, and they don't know what's in store. They're coming from the closet, and they're headed out the door. Hi, guys! There are all sorts of creatures growing up in these Indian forests. All you have to do is know how to spot them. Young elephants. Tiger cubs. This place is crawling with young creatures. I know. Everyone's growing up. Ah! You okay, brother? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Sometimes creatures are easier to spot than tree branches. Like those guys. Langer monkeys up here in the trees. and Langer monkeys down here on the ground. It's a whole Langer family. And it looks like there's a new addition to the family. A baby monkey. Born only a few days ago, this little monkey is growing fast. With a lot of help from mom, that is. At this age, a monkey needs his mom for everything. Now this baby monkey is a little bit older. He's probably about three months old. He's still nursing and getting a lot of his food and nutrition from his mom's milk. But he's also starting to try out solid foods. The way he does it is by running over to his mom and seeing what she's eating. He checks it out, see what it is, how she eats it, and then he goes off to try some for himself. You're seeing a baby monkey trying a new food for the first time. <laughs> but I guess he likes mom's milk a little better. <laughs> Now these two little guys are great buddies. They play together, they run around together, they do just about everything together. 
including climbing trees. This baby Langer monkey is just practicing his climbing. Because if you're a Langer monkey, climbing is a huge part of your day. Hey, Martin, let's climb like the Langer monkeys. All right! Well, I guess we grew a little too big for those tree branches. <laughs> yeah, but you guys keep on growing. Let's head back to Animal Junction. I wonder if Zaga grew by another garbanzo bean while we were gone. Let's find out. Well, hi, brothers. I built a new machine while you guys were away. This stretching machine will really help me grow. Woohoo! So, no! no. Stop! You can't do this! This is crazy! Zabu, you can't stretch yourself into growing bigger. You can't? No! The only way you can grow is by food, sleep, and exercise. Oh, oh. There you oh. Go. Thanks, brothers. I guess you're right. Huh. I just wanted to show Kling along how much I could grow. Kling along? Yeah, over there. Martin, look! Marmosets! Wow! Look how they're zooming around. Yeah, and their little hands just cling right onto the branches. Yeah, well, that's why I call him Cling Along and her Cling Aling. They've got a lot of growing to do if they're going to get as big as me, so I thought they could try out my new machine. They're supposed to be small, Zabu. Marmosets are the smallest type of monkey in the whole world. Listen, the sounds they make sound kind of like birds chirping, don't they? Check out the tiger stripes on their back and their tail. Wow. And then they have those white ear tops. Scratch. I've never seen a creature scratch so quickly. <laughs> how do you move so fast? Did you see how the marmosets chew on the tree? That's because they're trying to dig a hole in the tree and get the sap that flows out. They eat it like this pygmy marmoset's doing. Oh, do they eat anything else? They eat a few insects and some fruit, but mostly sap from trees. Big or small, all creatures grow at their own pace. Mondrezika, you're right. Well, just like I like being smaller than you guys. Why, Zob? Well, because. <laughs> because then I can cling on to you while you're leaping. Let's well, leap like lemurs. And while we're leaping and clinging, I'll tell a story from Zobu Land. All right. Well, we were leaping along. Leap, 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 <laughs> leap, leap, leap. When I landed, on a huge rock. But it wasn't a rock. It was an egg and it cracked. My mind got a great idea. I could fix the egg with some Zabuland tree sap. Whoa, whoa, it's very gooey. And I put it on the egg, but the egg kept cracking and cracking and cracking. And, and whoa, 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 ah! a baby Zabumafusaurus. <laughs> Mama? Mama? Me? Well, I'm not your mommy. Oh, will you help me find my mommy? So I said, sure, and we went to find his mommy. Uh -huh. well, on the way, baby Zabumafuasaurus asked me, Zabu, will you help me grow? Help you grow? Oof. Well, I know you need food, sleep, and exercise to grow, but here's something else that'll help you grow. Mama. Mama. <laughs> Baby. So we hopped on board and had a nice ride home. The end. Hey, that was a good one, buddy. Huh? Thanks. Zabu, you ready for one last measurement? Oh, yeah. Stand up straight. Another garbanzo bean. Oh, yeah. Zabu's <laughs> shooting up like a weed. Mongrel Zika, I am still growing. We're great growers, right, Kling Along? This animal is a friend of mine. From the tip of his nose to his funny behind. All the friends that we met today are special in their own way. We've all got different names, but we're really all the same. Thanks for dropping by, we're glad you came. These animals are friends of mine. They jump and swim, crawl, fly, and climb. One more thing we have to say, go make an animal friend today. I got more growing to do. Bye, Zabu. Keep on leaping. Hey, Chris, 
you know, I don't think we've ever seen that pig in Asia that grows a beard. The bearded pig, you're right. Yeah, let's go. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, my name is Karen, and this is Thumper. Ants and Eaters. Ready, Chris? Let's do it, Martin. Jump! Woo! Oh, yeah! Zebra, six o'clock. Hey, they look as small as ants. <laughs> Striped ants. <laughs> and there's Animal Junction. Okay, and these crosswinds should put us right on target! <laughs> Another perfect landing right in Animal Junction. You okay, Martin? Yeah, except that I landed in a anthill! Ants are little creatures with a big bite. Woohoo! Sorry, guys, didn't mean to sit on your home. An anthill is like a fortress, bustling with thousands of soldiers protecting it. When they bite you, it makes you leap like you know who. Zabu! Hey, Zabu! There he is! Come on in! Hey, Zabu! <laughs> it looks like Zabu's got ants in his pants, too. Hey, Zabu. How you doing, buddy? How you doing? Want to scratch? Yeah. It's great up here, isn't it? You should see what's down here. Look at these little guys. A bunch of ants and termites built homes here. It's like a whole other world in these mounds. It's amazing. Have you ever watched ants before, Zabu? Zabu? Well, you know Zabu. No chat until he's had a snack. Apples. Zabu, I've got an apple for you. There you go, buddy. Have a piece. Wait, not the whole apple. Here, I got a piece for you. This one. <laughs> there you go, buddy. That's the one. Give me some of the food. Hello, ants. Wow, you guys are sure fun to watch. Look at those little ants go. <laughs> wow! Ow, 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 ow! Ow, 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 Somebody bit me while I was watching those ants! Zabu, it was the ants! Huh? And these little creatures pack a powerful bite. Look at those oh. chompers. Munga, Sika, that's a big mouth for a little creature. I'm gonna call you Jaws. Hey. That makes my mind remember. On my way here, I saw another creature, a big creature with a little mouth. Who could it be? Who could it be? <laughs> this animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? Okay, he had two big eyes and a long face. <laughs> His mouth was pretty small, but he had a really bushy tail. Who could it be? This animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? A long-faced, bushy-tailed, small-mouthed creature. Do you know who he is? All right, let's see. He had a long face, small mouth, bushy tail, big claws, a giant anteater. Wow, he's amazing. And he has a face that's gianter than giant. <laughs> Long gone, Dieter. The mystery animal is here. Come on over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's slurping. He's slurping my face. <laughs> oh, hey, that tickles. <laughs> hey, Slurpy. That's what I'm going to call you, Slurpy. No, no, those are my feet! <laughs> Great name, Zabu. Slurpy the anteater. Check out that tongue. It's pretty long, right? But that's just the tip of it, because an anteater's tongue can get up to two feet long. The whole thing's longer than a shoelace or a water monitor's tongue. But guys, why is he called an anteater? Well, he doesn't really eat defenseless little ants, does he? Yeah, he really huh? does, Zabu. He really is an anteater. In fact, anteaters were built for eating ants. Just take a look at that long nose and listen to it sniff. 
giant anteaters have a great sense of smell. That's how they find ants. Like this tamandua, who is an anteater too, he sniffs along tree branches, searching for ants or termites. He finds them by smelling them. Wow, he can smell ants? I didn't even know ants were smelly. Yeah, and once he finds them, he uses his long, hard claws to get to them. He scratches away bark or dirt, and that is how he finds his food. His claws are so important for finding his food that he has to keep them sharp at all times. That is why an anteater walks on his knuckles, like this. Give it a try. An anteater has what it takes to hunt, catch, and eat ants. <laughs> but ants are great. Well, ants and anteaters should be friends. I'm gonna do something about this. I'm gonna make them best friends. Well, Slurpee, I was thinking, hey, whoa, whoa, what are you smelling? No, no, not the ants. No, no, wait, stop. Slurpee's gonna eat Jaws and all the other ants. I gotta stop him. Slurpee, wait, stop. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Slurpee, where are you going, huh? Oh, you're hungry? Well, here, the snack's right over here. Come on, do the snack machine. Uh-huh, can't eat it. See, uh, oh, nothing coming. Hello? Oh, nothing there. Oh, well, oof. <laughs> I meant to do that, yeah. An avocado. Oh, try it, Slurpster. You'll like it. Uh-huh. Slurpee likes fruit. Actually, giant anteaters do eat some fruit, but it has to be pretty mushy like an avocado because giant anteaters don't have any teeth. No teeth? That's right, no teeth. And creatures with no teeth, like a human baby, have to eat really soft food. Whoa, but he has a very flicky tongue. Oh, I'm almost getting dizzy. Oh. It's amazing. It's like a worm. Yeah. I told you he'd be a good fruit eater. You're right, Tom. When an anteater eats fruit, he doesn't eat a lot because an anteater mostly eats ants. How many ants does an anteater eat? An anteater eats 30,000 ants in a single day. That's a lot of ants. So fruits are pretty good, huh, Slurpee? Slurpee? Slurpee. He's looking for something else to eat. Oh, oh, wait, not the ants. I gotta stop him. I'll try to get his attention. Hey, Slurpee, let's run around Animal oh. Junction. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Gallop like an anteater. Try galloping on your knuckles. <laughs> it's not that easy, but it's easy for Slurpee. Come on, buddy. All right, over here. Whoop, through the legs. <laughs> Let's tickle Slurpee. Zabu, I've got him. I've got him in the tickle hold. Tickle hold? <laughs> Good work, Chris. Slurpee's not thinking about eating ants. He's thinking about being tickled. <laughs> he loves it. Oh, yeah, right there. Oh, yeah. Zaz, all you other ants, you are safe now. <laughs> he really wants to wrestle. <laughs> Wrestling with an anteater. <laughs> well, let's go. Come on. Uh-oh. Well, where's he going? Hey, no, wait, stop, not again. I know, my mind has an idea, but I better move fast. Oh, hey, Slurp, sir. Wanna see me do one of these crazy people things, huh? Yeah, come on over here. Now, this is the back of the bike, and uh, I get on over here. <laughs> and then uh, you you sit on it like this, and then uh, I think you just pedal. Yeah, I got it. Oh, yeah, this is easy. Uh-oh, oh. oh. to do that. And besides, I kept Slurpee's mind from thinking about ants. <laughs> You're right, Zob. Jaws and the other ants are still safe. Well, that's good, but I'm stuck. <laughs> Slurpee, I need help. Oh, oh hi, uh, Slurpee. Uh, can you can you get me out? Uh, that's a nice foot. <laughs> no, no, don't tickle my feet. Oh, stop. I give. I give. Oh, I give Slurpee all the mangoes you can eat. I'll give you. <laughs> Slurpee tickling me reminds me of one time in Sabu Land. I was leaping along. Leap, 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 leap. 
and I landed next to Snow Lemur playing in the sand. Hello, Snow Lemur, I said. Oh, uh, hi, Sabu. Uh, you know, when I come down to uh, Sabu land, I like playing in the sand. Yeah. Oh, I like the sand, too. It tickles my fingers. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, it feels good in my hands. Yeah, it tickles my sides, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it tickles my sides, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Huh? Sand can't tickle our sides! You're right, Sabu! It's not sand, it's me! Fibby! So Snow Lemur, Fibby, and I spent the rest of the morning together playing in the sand! <laughs> Great story, Zabu. Well, thanks. But you know, Slurpee really wants to get at those ants. Mm. I mean, anteaters eat ants. That's just life in the creature world. Yeah. And don't forget, ants have ways of protecting themselves. Remember those chompers? Oh, yeah. When an anteater attacks an ant hill, the ants bite so much that the anteater can only spend about a minute eating before he has to get out of there. And there are a lot more ants than anteaters, usually about a million ants to one anteater. See these driver ants? The workers are heading out in search of food. But see the line of ants on each side with the extra big jaws? Those are soldiers, and they protect the workers from danger. And then there's the acacia ants. The thorns of the acacia tree make sugary food for the ants in exchange for protection. These tough ants protect the tree against grasshoppers and other predators. Wow, ants are pretty tough. I've got it. I need to talk to the ants. Well, maybe I can convince them to be friends with the anteaters. Brothers! Yes, sir. I need to do this face to face. Build me a shrinking machine so I can be as small as an ant. A shrinking machine? Yeah. Like this one? Huh? Come on in! The shrinking machine! Huh? <gasps> Manga Zika! I'm ready to go! <laughs> to the ants! Chris, you know, one of us should really go with them. You're right. Good luck. I'll stay here with Slurpee. Zab, it looks like I'm coming with you. Well, thanks, Martin. That's big of you. Get it? Big? <laughs> all right, Zab, are you all set? All set. Ready to go. Set to ant size. All systems go. Whoa! 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 I'm shrinking! Me too! I'm getting smaller! Whoa! We're ant size! It worked! Look who's coming. Uh -oh. Uh oh To oh, the no. end hill. Run, Martin! I'll distract him. So Slurpee. All right, are you ready. ready, Zabu? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, one, two, two three, three. Leap! Woohoo! Right. Yeah, stuck your head. Yeah, it's tight in here. Okay. Okay. Hey, it's Jaws! How do you know that's Jaws? Well, I'd know that face anywhere. Hey, Jaws! <laughs> I need to talk to all the ants. Could you take us to them? Whoa, hey, wait for us! us. How are you guys doing down there? You know, an anteater has a really sticky tongue. That's how he comes up with a mouthful of ants. So watch out for that tongue. Yeah. Here we are, Zabu, the nesting chamber. This is where the ants take care of their eggs and babies. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. This is my big chance. I'm gonna talk to them. <clears throat> hear ye, hear ye. Hello, ants. You know this little war you've been having with the anteaters? Well, uh, I think you guys should be buddies. Hello? Hello? Anybody hear me? Zabu, the ants are busy. They're doing what ants do. In an ant colony, there's strength in numbers, so more ants are being made all the time. Ants started as eggs, and then they become larvae. See those white worm-like things? Those are the larvae, and the workers feed them and take care of them. Everybody's just doing what ants do. Doing what ants do. And I guess anteaters do what anteaters do. Exactly, Zabu. And anteaters eat ants. Yeah. And a lemur is made to be lemur-sized. Back, Back to, to the, the machine. machine. Whoa! That was great. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, buddy. The itch is right there. Yeah, right there. Thanks. Hey, they're back. Time to hit the big time. Whoa! <laughs> How'd it go, guys? Well, I decided that ants are ants and anteaters are anteaters. And anteaters need to eat ants to survive. But ants have pretty good ways of protecting themselves. So, it all kind of works out in the end, right? Mm-hmm. And all kinds of eaters are good eaters. Hey, you know what? What? I'm feeling ant-eaterish. <laughs> I 
I feel different, not the same. This kind of feeling I can't explain. There's only one thing that I can do. I feel anteaterish. How about you, anteaterish? I feel anteaterish. Anteaterish. I'm a long faced slurper with a super long tongue. Anteaterish. I'm going back for more. I love this machine. Being small is Manga Tsika. <laughs> now I'm feeling antish again. Doc! Doc! Incoming! Hi, Moonface. <laughs> it's not a duck. It's a giant Moonface, the barn owl. Well, giant to a mini Zabu. Whoa, I've never seen your talons so close before. They're like giant teeth to a little creature. <laughs> And Moonface brought a message from the Animal Helpers. Hi guys, hi Zabu, Amy here. My friends live on a farm and have three pet goats. Goats are great pets. They love it when you pat them. That tickles. My friends don't even have to mow the lawn anymore because the goats keep the grass nice and short. See what I mean? Goats will eat everything, even the flowers in your garden. They're great eaters, all right. All right! There are all kinds of incredible eaters in the world. Yeah, and I like being ant-sized, but I'm ready to be lemur-sized again. Flick on the machine, brothers! Okay, here goes. Oh. <laughs> Something's wrong! It's not working! It's out of the special ingredient! Uh-oh. Don't worry, we'll get some! Sounds like a trip to Mini Zabu. To, to the, the closet. closet! They're going to the closet. They're going on a trip. They're going to the closet uh -oh. to grab their You know what always happens lit. when we open the closet? Well, we gotta do what we gotta do. <laughs> They're going on a cool adventure and they, they don't know what's in store. They're coming from the closet. A container for the secret ingredient. Go along, Chris. See you later, Zabu. Hi, brothers. We're here in Africa, searching for the special ingredient for the shrinking machine, aardwolf spit. And how do you find aardwolf spit? Well, you could get it directly from an aardwolf, except that's not easy. Or you could also find it on a termite mound. You see, aardwolves are a special type of hyena that eat termites, so it's only natural that they'd leave a little bit of spit on a termite mound. Let's find a termite mound, come on. Too bad we don't need elephant spit, they're everywhere. All right, our first termite mound. Any hard wolf spit, Martin? I don't know, but there are termites. Hey, talk about saliva. Termites build these mounds by mixing their spit with dirt. The mound bakes in the sun and becomes as hard as concrete. Yeah, lots of termites. But what about the hard wolf spit? Let me see. We'll take a sample with our hard wolf spit test kit. Just scrape off a little dust here, and this machine will detect if there is any spit left by an hard wolf lapping up termites. Nothing. No aardwolves have been here, but birds definitely have. Look, bird poop. Birds sometimes use termite mounds as perches and lookout points. Baboons like to laze around on a termite mound, too. In fact, they play king of the termite mound. Let's keep looking for aardwolf spit. Stop was waiting. All right, termite mound number two. Except, I don't think we're going to find any fresh aardwolf spit here. That's because this is an old termite mound. And with no termites living here anymore, why would an aardwolf come by? He wouldn't. But there's another creature who loves old termite mounds. Mongoose. Oh, yeah. If you're a mongoose and need protection from the hot African sun and predators like a jackal, a termite mound is a great place to go. A mongoose is small enough to get into all of the tunnels, and the mound is so hard, it's almost impossible for any predator to break into. Another termite mound. Test result. Ooh, negative. We're not having much luck. Yeah, and it's getting hot out of here. Yeah. Hey, let's use the termite mound like a jackal. Yeah. For shade. She has her shady spot, and we have ours. I'm feeling cooler. Yeah, me too. So, let's keep searching for aardwolf spit. All right. There must be an aardwolf around here somewhere. Yes! We hit aardwolf spit! <laughs> and there's the aardwolf! What an amazing creature. 
An art wolf only eats a few termite species and she only hunts them at night. She uses her long sticky tongue to lick up the termites. She can eat 200,000 termites in one night. All right, well, we've got the secret ingredient for the shrinking machine. Let's get back to Animal Junction with this Ardwolf spit. Giraffe spit. We don't need any of that. Not today, at least. <laughs> Hey, Chris, look. It's Animal Junction. We did it, Zappa. We found the secret ingredient. Whoa. Do you see what I see? Giant Chihuahua. Mini anteater. Brothers, the machine's really going crazy now. It's shrinking and enlarging everybody. Incredible. Have you ever seen a mini elephant? Or a giant chimpanzee? The whole world of nature's out of whack. Sabu, good thing we got back when we did. You can say that again. Hope this art will spit works. <laughs> well, hi, Brainiac. Well, yeah, I'm ready, too. OK, we're ready to get back to normal. Let's do it. All we have to do is put the secret ingredient inside the machine, and it's ready to go. Got it? All right, turn it on. OK, everybody, in the machine. Toothbrush first. It worked. <laughs> All right, now the end eater. Hooray for our well spit man. <laughs> I'm a lemur again, and toothbrush is a big elephant again. Pine sized chihuahua, normal sized penguins, everyone's back to the size they should be. Bye, Brainiac. See you later, Splish and Splash. And everybody's the eaters they should be. <laughs> That's right. And Toothbrush is an herbivore. That means he eats plants. Me too! I'm an herbivore too! <laughs> toothbrush can really pack away the plants. He can eat more than this whole pile of hay in just one day. And he's just a baby. Wow, he's a super duper power plant eater. <laughs> but Shark is a different kind of eater. Chameleons are insectivores. That means... He's a bug eater, because an insect is a bug and a vore is an eater. So an insectivore is a bug eater. You got it, Zabu. And Shark really likes mealworms. Mm -hmm. Whoa, a chameleon has one fast tongue. He spots his prey, takes aim, and wham! He has his dinner. His tongue can be longer than his whole body. Wow. Hey, Zab, you have a mealworm on you. Well, that's OK. Shark will help me out, won't you, Shark? Thanks. You know what, Shark? <laughs> All these eaters remind me of one time in Sabu Land. I was leaping along. Leap, 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 leap. Where are you? Leap. When I bumped into this sensei. Oh, hi, sensei. Oh, hi, Sabu. I've been looking for you everywhere. Huh? We're having a taste test taste to find test? everybody's favorite food in Sabu Land. Oh, I love to eat. Lead the way. <laughs> Wigging? <laughs> she loves slurping big root noodles. <laughs> and my personal favorite is mango fruit. Here, try oh, one, thanks, Zabu. Thanks, sensei. <laughs> Yummy. Gobo berries, gobo berries. I love gobo berries. And I know your favorite food, Bugly. Boconuts. Thanks, Sabudi Duck. Boconuts rock. <laughs> hey, Sabu, you know, everybody has their favorite food, but I know one everybody likes. Oh, I'll bring it in, Sabu. Ice fruit cake. Ice fruit cake. Yeah. I love cake. Uh, come on, oh, everybody. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. And we ate Zabu Land ice fruit cake for the rest of the day. The end. <laughs> A great story, Leaf Eater. Well, thanks, Spaghetti Eater. <laughs> what was your favorite part of the day, Zabu? Oh, I like being ant-sized and going into the anthill. I liked when Zabu was riding on that bike and whizzing all around. I liked when Slurpee slurped up all the avocado. <laughs> Ants and eaters are great. I love all kinds of eaters. Yeah! This animal is a friend of mine. From the tip of his nose to his body behind. All the friends we met today are special in their own way. We've all got different names, but we're really all the same. Thanks for dropping by, we're glad you came. These animals are friends of mine. They jump and swim, crawl, fly, and climb. One more thing we have to say, go make an animal friend today. Yeah! Bye, Snoopy. See you later, buddy. See you later, guys. I gotta go do lemur things. See you later, Zabu. Keep on leaping, lemur. 
Hey, Martin, want to go check out some dirt eaters? Oh, yeah, I'm with you, brother. And remember, all eaters are good eaters. It's just survival in the creature world. See you next time. To the Earthworms! Hi, I'm Blue Diamond. This is my pet Shara. <laughs> Brain power. <laughs> We're almost there, Chris. Good, because this load's pretty heavy. We finally got it. All right. Oh, but this sure is a lot of parts. Yeah, we have everything we need to make our incredible invisible machine. All we have to do is put it together. If we can figure out these plans, we'll be invisible. We'll be here, but nobody will see us. Whoa. This is going to take some brains. What a creature. A Triton cockatoo. These parrots are incredible communicators because they live together in big groups. These are galahs, another type of cockatoo. From the moment they're born, they learn to communicate with all kinds of chirps, squawks, and chatters. Parrots can learn so many things. This is one smart family of birds. Hey, let's call one smart lemur. Zabu! Zabu! Hey, do you want to help us call Zabu? Come on! Zabu! Zabu! Where is he? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you were hiding! <laughs> hey! Zabu's here! And we're gonna have a lot of fun! Come on! Hey, Zab, wait up! Zabu, slow down, buddy! You know Zabu. He won't slow down till he's had a snack. And I know just the thing. Kiwis! <laughs> Here, Chris. Thanks, Martin. Zabu, how about some kiwi fruit? Zabu loves kiwi. There you go. Give me. <laughs> I was hiding. Hiding's a fun game. Huh? Huh? You called my name, too. You must be pretty smart. Huh? All right, I think everything we need's here. Yeah, and it looks like everything's arranged around the main turbo thruster. Oh, oh yeah? An invisible machine? Yes, yeah, Zob, an invisible machine. <laughs> an invisible machine! <laughs> What's that for? To get invisible, Zabu. Haven't you always wanted to be invisible? Oh, okay. I'm ready. Let's try it. Make me an invisible leaping lemur. <laughs> invisible lemurs can really hide. <laughs> Hi. First, we have to put it together. And that's going to take some brain power. Brain power? <gasps> that reminds me of a creature I saw on my way here. Who could it be? Could it be <laughs> this animal who I did see? Can you help me guess this mystery? When I saw her in the forest, she was trying to catch a bug. Who could it be? This animal who I did see. She kind of looked like the Krat Brothers, with lots of hair. And she was smart, too. Who could it be? This animal who I did see. Can you help me guess this mystery? A smart bug-catching creature. Do you know who she is? All right, let's see. Looks like the Krat Brothers with lots of hair. Chris! Oh, climbs like Zabumafu. Martin. Walks like us. Brothers! <gasps> a a chimpanzee! Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Manga Chimpska, Mr. Animal's here. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll bet she could help with the invisible machine. Oh, yeah! Hey, hey she's saying that she could. <laughs> yeah, I think she wants to, Zob. <laughs> and we're lucky because chimps are incredibly smart creatures. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Maybe she has another idea. She does? Oh, come on, give up your idea. Huh? Hey, I think she wants to play, yeah. 
Hey, you're pretty fast. <laughs> hey, Chris, it looks like she wants to play chase. <laughs> Come and get me. You gotta move faster. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, this game of chase is making me oh, dizzy. Oh. <laughs> Young chimps love to play all kinds of different games, just like humans. And playing teaches them things they need to know for when they grow up. So playing is good for their brains? Yes, yeah, Zob. Playing power is great for brain power. You know what? You're so smart. I think I'll call you, uh, brain, 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 brainiac. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Hmm? You like that name? Oh, well, me too. <laughs> I do. Brainiac. Hey, Brainiac, we could use your brains. You want to help us build the invisible machine? <laughs> All right. OK, guys, let's start building the invisible machine. But first, we have to get into these boxes. Brainiac. Do you want me to help you with this box? Yeah, OK. This invisible machine sure is fun. All right. Wow. Here, let's check out this one, Brady. Fun. Is there anything over in this box? Yes. Look at this. Oh, another piece. Well, that's a big piece. Well, see anything else in there, Brainiac? Oh, it's a cord. <laughs> oh, so many surprises. <laughs> it's like opening presents on your birthday. Brainiac's looking for more surprises. <laughs> A chimp in the box. Hey. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> she found a drill. Oh, yeah. Chimps are one of the few creatures who use tools in the wild. Does she know how to use a drill? Because, well, I always end up spinning around when I use a drill. <laughs> no, she doesn't use a drill, Zabu. But a chimpanzee can use a twig as a tool to pick up insects from hard to get at places. You have to be a pretty smart creature to figure out how to use a tool. There you yeah, go. Like that? No, right here, you hit that. Brainiac must be hungry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you okay, Zob? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> We're playing. No, I'm it. You're it. I'm it. You're Chris. it. I'm, whoa! Oh, she got me. Oh, that was fun. Hey, guys, remind me again what we're doing? We're building the invisible machine. Oh, yeah. But first, I think I'll take Brainiac over and get some brain food. Great idea. Let's go. Food for thought. <laughs> oh. Oh. Whoa. Brainiac figured out how to use the snack machine all by herself. Plus, did you see how she peeled that banana? Next time you eat a banana, try eating it like a chimp does. She likes to put it under her lower lip like this. Ah, oh, good, huh? Food for a slip. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, another part of the invisible machine. Let's put our brain power to work and find out where this one goes. All right, so now that we have all the parts, we'll put the parts together and make the invisible machine. Hmm. Oh, don't rip up the map. We need that. There. All right. Let's... This is going to be a tough build. Yep. Sure is. All right, we got the directions, though, so. Oh, whoa, whoa. Here, put this piece together. <laughs> this goes right here, is that Ooh. right? While you guys are using your brain power to put the machine together, I'm gonna tell a story about Sabu Land. <laughs> I was leaping along, leap, 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 when I almost leaped, whoop, right into Wiggy Waxwing. <laughs> What's the matter with everyone? We're hungry, Zabu. Yeah, there's only one Goobleberry bush left for all of us. And just one. Mm. Must eat, must eat, must uh, eat. Oh no, oh. Goobles gonna eat all the Goobleberries. Never fear, Zabu the Super Lemur is here. Oh, wait, 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 Google. Inside these Googleberry fruits are seeds. Well, if we plant these seeds in the ground, a whole new Googleberry bush will grow, and we'll have lots of Googleberries. But how are we going to plant them then? I can't dig with these small arms. I can dig holes. Great idea, Noggin Drill. 
So I called Buggy and jumped on his back with a pile of goobleberries with Narchi underneath. So while Noggin Drill dug holes, I loaded Narchi's nose and he blew goobleberries in all the little holes all over Zabu land. Goobble kicked the dirt over the seeds and before long, new goobleberries grew all over Zabu land. Hey, it worked! Ah. The super lemur saved the day with his brains! I love that lemur. And everyone had lots to eat. The end. <laughs> Brainiac said she loved my story. Huh? At last! The invisible machine! It's already finished? Not quite, Zabu. We still have to figure out where this last piece that Brainiac has goes. Oh. Yeah, to figure that out, we're gonna all have to put our heads together. Well, I could figure it out uh, if only I could read. Wow. Hmm. Plans don't show where. Where does that piece go? Come on, Brainiac. Let's you and I go swinging. That'll get our brainy juices going. <laughs> Brainiac and I are tired of thinking, so we're just gonna swing a little bit. Go for it. <laughs> I'm tired already. Fun. <laughs> can't figure it out. I can't either. Where does this part go? Hey, Brainiac, look at Chris and Martin. They're still thinking. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. I love you too. You're so cool. <laughs> so, Zabu, where do you think this piece goes? I don't know. I didn't even know it went. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Oh, you're welcome. If we could just find a way, connect all of our brain power, then we'd figure out where that piece went. But what are we gonna do? Got it. This idea machine will help us put all our brain power together and come up with a super incredible idea. All right, we're all set. Fire it up, Brainiac. Do you feel it yet? Oh, oh, I feel it. Brain power. Brain power. Oh, my mind has an idea. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. This piece goes right there. Zabu, no, wait, wait. no. no! Uh-oh. Where'd he go? I'm over here. No, no, over here. No, I'm over here. Oh, this invisible lemur is gonna drive me crazy. Over here, guys. Nothing could be finer than swinging on a viner. Hey, guys. Yeah, Zob. What's harder to see than a swinging lemur? I don't know. Could it be an, an invisible swinging lemur? I'm leap, leap, swinging all over Animal Junction and no one can see me. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get him back. I don't know how to do this either. I don't want to get back. I'm hiding. <laughs> well, we might not be able to see him, but we can still find him. Hey, I think Brainiac knows how to find him. That's a great idea, Brainiac. Are you two thinking what I'm thinking? Come on. Watch this. I'll put this kiwi right here, cause Zabu can't resist kiwis. All right, you ready? I'm ready. And Brainiac's ready too. Zabu, how about a snack, buddy? Mmm, I smell kiwi. Woo! <laughs> yeah! Oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> you found an invisible lemur, but I think it looked more like a ghost lemur. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, Zob, but we couldn't have figured it out without Brainiac's smart brains. You're right, Chris. And I think Brainiac just figured out how to make Zabu visible again, too. Hit it, Brainiac! Let's see if it worked. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have the real Zabu back. Way to go, Brainiac. I feel chimpish. I feel different, not the same. This kind of feeling I can't explain. There's only one thing that I can do. I feel chimpish. How about you, chimpish? I feel chimpish. <laughs> chimpish. A big brain date with sparks between my ears. Chimpish. Oh, oh, thank you, Brainiac. Hey, there's a troop of chimpanzees outside. Well, I guess it's time for you to go home. 
See you later. Good, buddy. Say hi to your family for me. See you later, Brainiac. There she goes, living free and in the wild. Incoming. Duck! That doesn't feel like a duck. Well, that's because it's not a duck. It's Moonface the Barn Owl. Did you see me being invisible today? I don't think so, Zabu. It's kind of hard to see a lemur being invisible. In fact, it's kind of hard to see anybody being invisible. Right, Chris? Where'd Chris go? Maybe he went invisible, Martin. Where are you, Chris? Chris? Uh, Martin? <laughs> we fooled you. You thought Chris was invisible. You had to go in there for a second. <laughs> Let's see what the animal helpers are up to now. Hi, guys. Hi, Zabu. Amy here. I'm visiting my friend, Renard, and his dog, Mascal, and Oliver and his dog, Nickel. They're amazing teams. Come on and see why. Oliver doesn't get around the way I do, so Nickel helps him. Muscal and Nickel help Bernard and Oliver every day, even going to the mall. And if Oliver drops something, Nickel picks it up for him. Isn't he smart? My friends wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things they do without the help of their special needs dogs. Now that's what I call a creature with brains. What a manga Tsika creature. He learned to do so much with all his brain power. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm beginning to get an idea. With all your brain power? Yep. Chimp well, brains are smart, right? But what about other creature brains? Mm -hmm. Why don't we find out? In India! To the closet! <laughs> Sounds like a trip to me. They're going to the closet. They're going on a trip. They're going to the closet to grab their stuff and split. To the closet! What? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> They're going on a cool adventure and they don't know what's in store. They're coming from the closet and, and they're headed out the door. Oh. See you later, Sob. Bye, brothers. Okay, so we've met a lot of amazing brains, but what about bird brains? probably heard about bird-brained, meaning not so smart, right? But the truth is, there are many, many birds who are very intelligent. Like, like crows! <laughs> what are they doing back there? Uh-oh. Aren't our sandwiches in the back? Our lunch! Hey, that's our lunch! <laughs> we need that for our adventure! Those crows were watching us, waiting for us to stop the jeep so they could swoop down and steal our sandwich. But we're not the only creatures the crows are watching. Crows keep their eyes on tigers, leopards, wild dogs, looking for the opportunity to grab a bite of whatever these creatures are eating. Let's see how smart these crows really are. We're going to do an experiment to test the crows' intelligence. First, we're gonna show them this bread. See it, everybody? Here's the bread. Okay, now we're gonna take the bread, put it on the ground, and put the leaf over it. And now, let's see if the crows can find it. She found it! <laughs> okay, well that was pretty smart. But now let's make things a little tougher. Let's take two new leaves and only put the bread under one leaf. Okay, I'm putting it under this light green one. Now, I'm gonna mix them up. Are you crows watching? You have to remember which leaf the bread's under. Can you remember? It's this one. She got it! Great job! No doubt about it, bird brains are great brains. Except that peacock still has to figure out he's fighting his reflection and not another peacock. <laughs> it might take him a little while, but we've got to fly. Let's see what Zabu's up to. Zabu.
Abu? Wait a minute. There's nobody here. What's going on? Hi, guys. Guess who's invisible in Animal Junction now? Could be anybody. I'll give you a clue. He's really, really big. Do you know who it could be? Let's find out. I'll bet you you can find him before the brothers do. <laughs> we bumped into a huge creature, that much I know. OK, I'll give you another clue. Hmm? A toothbrush. I bet I know who the invisible animal is. Martin, you have the harmonica? Oh, yeah, I've got it here. Here. I'm just going to put <laughs> this harmonica right here, because I think the invisible creature will want to play it. Of course, toothbrush the elephant. Hey, a toothbrush. Bet you never saw an invisible elephant before, especially one who played harmonica. Nope, this is a first. Only at Animal Junction. Here, I'm going to make him visible. There's Toothbrush! Good to see you again! <laughs> He's one smart elephant. Elephants are incredibly smart creatures. For one thing, elephants have to remember certain things to survive, like where the water holes are. Water holes can be far, far away, and if the matriarch or leader doesn't remember where they are, the whole herd could be in trouble. Because elephants get pretty thirsty. Hey, Sob, what are you doing? And Toothbrush says I can ride on his back. He says it's OK, because I'm not too heavy. What? Well, you're hungry? Well, let's go get a snack. <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like the snack machine's broken again, guys. Again? Well, then I guess let's put our heads together and fix it. <laughs> hey, Toothbrush, right. what are you doing? Hey, guys, I think Toothbrush has an idea. Chris Martin, he does. Look! What would Brainiac do? What would an emu do? Toothbrush, fix the snack machine. You're so smart. Toothbrush always figures out how to get into the snack machine. <laughs> yeah, because when an elephant wants to get something, he figures out a way to get it. Hey, that reminds me of another time in Sabu Land. I was leaping along. <laughs> Weep, weep, weep. When I saw everybody running around, afraid. Well, I'm freaking out. Oh. What should become of our show? Ain't good, I tell you. Well, I'm gonna dig a hole. That's where I'll go. Oh, scared, scared, not happy. Scared. Oh. Well, what's the matter, Sai? I'm glad you asked. A giant snowball is rolling down Mount Zabumufu. It will mean our destruction, yes. Then my mind thought for a minute. And then I knew what to do to save Zabu land. Never fear. Zabu the super lemur to the rescue. So I leapt to the mountain and stood in the way of the snowball. Aha! Ha ha! Uh-oh. Whoa! But then, all of a sudden, the snowball and I landed right in the middle of a gooberberry jelly patch. We feel happy now that you have saved Zabu Land. Gooberberry snow cone. Mmm, good. We ate gooberberry snow cones till we couldn't eat any more. The end. Sounds like everyone always ends up happy in Zabuland. Oh, yeah, we help each other all the time. Well, just like when Brainiac helped us build the invisible machine. It was amazing having an invisible elephant in Animal Junction. This animal is a friend of mine. From the tip of his nose to his funny behind. All the friends that we met today are special in their own way. We've all got different names, but we're really all the same. Thanks for dropping by. We're glad you came. Thanks for a great day, Toothbrush. Bye, Toothbrush. Well, I gotta go now. Being invisible can sure tire you out. Bye. Bye, Zabu. We gotta go to. Right, Chris? Chris? Right here, Martin. I'm invisible. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let's see what we can do about making you visible. All right, let's see here. That 
should do it. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'm invisible too. Hey, come on, bro, let's go check out another brainy creature, the orangutan. You got it, Chris. Hi, my name's Roland. This is my hat to baby.